Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of the Woolly Thistle Shopcast. I believe this is episode 173. I'm Corrine. I own and operate the Woolly Thistle. This is Maggie, our wonderful marketing expert and uh, all things customer service as well. A lot of you know Maggie, which is fantastic. So we are here with a new episode for you. Um, how are you doing, Maggie? I'm good. How yeah. are you? I'm okay. I'm okay. I actually have some issues with my hands going on right now, which I'm sure I'll talk about. But other than that, I'm really, really good. <laughs> and we have horrible weather out today. It is actually very Scottish out there as I drove to work in the rain and the cloud and the dark. Um, it was brighter this morning when I woke up. Than and it, it got darker. The cl yeah. The clouds rolled in and it's... But actually, we need the rain, which is good. Hopefully, yeah. it'll break the humidity that we had all weekend, which was bleh. It was super hot, too. It wasn't just humid. It was like 90 It was very hot. Yeah, I tried In to New Hampshire, I know for some parts of the country, 90-something is not a big deal. But in New Hampshire, it's, it's huge. Like, <laughs> you know, in Scotland, it's pretty humid. But it only, you know, a high would be 75. So you do end up feeling kind of clammy and sweaty, but you're not as well as, you know, super hot like you are here. Really? I felt like a slug all weekend. I don't have air conditioning yet in the house, so working on that. But anyway, here we are. I still knitted. Did you knit this weekend? Yeah, a yeah, little bit. A little bit. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Okay, so um, segments uh, that we have for you this time, we have Caitlin, who is continuing on her journey with that fleece that she has uh, washed and prepped and uh, she's going to show you some spinning as well as her progress on her Hansel hat and I'm glad I'm not the only one who is not yet finished. <laughs> so more of us and we'll keep it fairly um, you know light and we'll talk about what we got to talk about and we'll share Maybe Caitlin this with you. actually will be a shorter episode. We sometimes we say, say that, that and then it goes on for like a long hours, time. But... Yeah so thanks for hanging in there. Yeah. I know many people will watch it over a few days which is nice. Yeah that's nice if you're not sick and tired of us <laughs> by that point. <laughs> Uh, so let's announce a winner, Maggie. There you go. Our first winner is Judy Brewer, and she says, Thank you for another beautiful, packed full of info. Really enjoyed all the laughter. Kareen, your victory guard cardigan is gorgeous, and I love the color. Love hearing from Emma and Kelsey. Happy knitting, everyone, and blessings. Happy knitting to you. So, Who is that, Judy? So Judy Brewer. So um, you are the winner of a $25 gift card to the Woolly Thistle. You can email us at info at the Woolly Thistle. Put prize winner in all caps in the subject line, and we will get your gift card out to you. Yeah, and we tell you to do it all in caps just so that we can find you quicker. <laughs> <laughs> so that's good. And yes, if you want to be in the running for a prize next time, just leave us a comment to this episode. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Great. Well, well done, Judy. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, we are not wearing any hand knits of any kind. No, not even socks today. Well, it's too warm. It is. It's too warm. It's not too warm to knit, but it's kind of warm to be wearing it, I think. Yeah. Although, Caitlin is wearing some a knitted item in her section. Yes. Yeah. I am seeing lots of beautiful summer knit, summer weight sweaters. Yeah. I've just never knit any. Me neither. So. Mm. Are you seeing them knitted in wool though or other? No. Yeah. Usually maybe a couple wool blends, but I think it's mostly like linen cotton. or cotton. Have you ever and, knitted with cotton? Uh, not nice cotton. No, me <laughs> I've neither. I've knit with like, I've knit dishcloths like yeah. I think every knitter, but don't love them. I crocheted a whole massive granny square blanket in cotton and it was fine. It didn't hurt my hands, but knitting with cotton seems to hurt my hands. I don't know why. I think there's just yeah. no stretch in it, but for some reason crochet was okay. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I've, I've crocheted with cotton before too and it was okay, but I think, I don't know if it has to do with the stretch or not. I don't know. Maybe you My know sister there. actually crocheted me a little top. The problem I have with it is that um, I, it's beige and I just don't, it kind of washes me out. Hmm. So Could you embellish it with some color or something maybe. around the edge? Yeah. Maybe. That would be a good idea. I'm full of them. You're welcome. <laughs> Oh, well, that's good. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. And linen is a good one for summer. We don't mm. tend to specialize in those yarns too much. Um, we, we are the woolly, the woolly thistle. Yeah. Uh, we have had linen um, and sometimes from Blacker we get their uh, lioness linen and wool blend. I don't think we've had much else though. 
Yeah. So anyway, um, <laughs> we're still knitting on with wool. Do you have anything to show us today? Uh, do you have any FOs, first of all? Um, sort of-ish. It's a half FO. Half so FO. So one of my Irene socks is Gorgeous. done. Gorgeous. Um, Lovely. I really do love this pattern. Look at how it pops as well. So tell us again what so the pattern is. The and... pattern is by Tracy Millar of the Grocery Girls and it's called the Irene Socks. It's lovely. Um, she named it for your daughter, huh? <laughs> I believe she named it for her grandmother. She wrote that in the pattern so you can see that pattern on the front. Oh, it's so and pretty. it's not an actual cable. It's a little fake. Yeah, it's like a slip. Um, you slip a stitch and then pop it over and clever not a real cable what yarn are you knitting that way so i'm using coop knits from last year's sock bag i'm still on a journey to finish all those um oh, socks it's actually really nice knitted up isn't it's it? it's really nice and um it is thinner it's a light fingering yarn, yeah so um it's taking okay. me a little longer but just, just it's very it one. must be very round is it an actual four ply do you know i think so i think i actually here i can yeah, I it think looks I like already did that, and I think it is a four ply. They are very, which makes the yarn itself, the structure, very round, and mm -hmm. so it's going to pop when you do texture knitting, which is a lovely thing on a pair of socks. And I want to say it's seventy five twenty five, so it's going to be a really strong. It's going to last actually. forever. Um, so you have one of these done, one done, and the other one's oh, underway. You're I'm almost. You're at I stuck the a heel. progress keeper in because I'm almost to the heel. Good, so. good, good, good. Lovely. And you've got that in your. And Harris I've got it in bag. my Harris Tweed bag. It's Aww. amazing, actually, the amount that I had shoved in this Harris Tweed bag. Because um, I also, I haven't worked on it much, but I have an Exmoor sock going, too, because why not? Why not? That's on. And that's from um, the bag last year, too? This is also from the bag last year, too. Um, it, it This one is the One More Step pattern from it's Denise lovely. Santos of Earth Tones Girl. Yes, Earth Tones Girl. And so, I have seen a few questions um, from people who are completely brand new sock knitters mm -hmm. wanting to know if we can recommend any patterns. What we recommend is that you go to Earth Tones Girl on YouTube and look up her No Fear Sock course, which is free and explains everything. Yeah. Step it, by step. Yeah, um, she's just got an abundance of information. So if you're stuck at any point during the sock, she walks you through everything. Yep, so you can't go wrong. So we recommend that. And then I think too, if you're not a beginner knitter and you want to dive a little deeper into socks, she's still your gal. Yeah, um, yeah, because she does all different heels and yeah. you know, She videos. shared a new cast on on Instagram the other day. Fascinating. Huh. I must have watched that little video like, huh. a bunch of times because was... it just looked like magic. Um, it was a shadow wrap toe that yeah. she cast on. Right. So hmm. it, it was just fascinating. Huh. She went like over the cord in different ways. Go find the video if you haven't seen it. it yeah, was, yeah. It was really, I'll okay. show you later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that like, sounds interesting. I the first time I saw it, I was like, wait, what's she doing? <laughs> <laughs> wait, now, are you a toe-up sock knitter? I prefer cuff down. I have done toe up and, and I don't prefer cuff down so much that I wouldn't do a toe up pair if I really like them. Have you ever? Um... I mostly prefer toe or cuff down because I, I really like um, a gusseted heel. Yes, me too. And I don't like doing it from the toe up. I don't mind. I don't I just, mind. I just don't like it. I mean, I would say I'm, I think I like, I'm very much the sort of person who likes to get the work out of the way. <laughs> And then, so as you knit top down, you've got more stitches, you get the heel done and then zoop down the foot. Yeah. And the bottom of the foot is usually just plain stock in it. So there's less going on. Right. Whereas if you go toe up, you, you know, you're building up to more and more. But um, I don't mind knitting toe up. I do prefer top down. But have you ever converted a toe up pattern to top down? No. Do you think you could? Depends on the pattern. Yeah. I've done it. I remember the first time someone suggested that to me. It was actually, oh, Celtic cast on. Wow, this is going back. And she's like, just flip it. And my mind was blown that you could do that. But it's not that it's not that hard to try and fit it into your top down recipe, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. We're all about yeah. socks, or we're moving into socks, aren't we? Yeah. Because we've got our sock cow coming. Yeah, I'm enjoying my sock knitting. It's mm -hmm. nice, like we've the past few weekends have been filled with a bunch of driving and um it's Perfect. nice because i can just grab this take you're it not driving car. i'm not driving <laughs> um, i'm not the one doing the driving so just to point that um, out and and i'm okay on the highway i can knit if we get on these windy roads then i'm like mm, uh yeah no i'm done yeah 
Um, especially with my Irene socks, I do okay. I do have to look down. I'm yep. not just going round and round. Yeah. Um, so just to make sure I'm on the right track. Yeah. Um, well, so. do you have any other? Is this? I did a little bit of swatching. That's the only other thing All that right, I well, have. But why don't we? Why don't we see what you've done? This is um, a little baby knit that has been neglected, but I'm back on it. And it's going to be a baby romper. And Aww. I'll put the name of the designer here. She's absolutely lovely, but uh, I believe she's Portuguese and I cannot pronounce her name. Um, so rather than butcher it, we'll put it right here. And this is, so you start with the back and then there's some arm oh. shaping. It's so cute. And then you pick up and you start um, the front and I'm doing the shaping right now that will, and then I'll do this here and all the way down and then we'll pick it up in the round and it round and round. It's actually a garter stitch, but I changed it to the moss stitch because I like it. And I think this is called, I'll put the name of it here, it's cedar, cedar something, romper something. Um, and very, very um, good pattern in terms of explanation and what you need to do. So I've got this on my barber cords because she said get some get some uh, waist yarn and put those stitches on the holder and I was like you know I'm like oh so I'm looking for my needle and and then I realized oh wait a minute I've got knitting barber cords somewhere so I went and dug through boxes because I just moved and um and I found them and I was like zip right off the needle like oh thank goodness so yeah this is this is coming along nicely and what I really like is the eye cord on the edging you knit the eye cord as you knit it's each such a row nice clean edge isn't it lovely yeah so i've not done that before so it's so cute, it's so cute. It's tiny <laughs> it's for a three to six month old um and it's for a baby that i'm guessing might be taller <laughs> or longer so yes. i've added a few extra rows here or there just to elongate um, so that it lasts this lovely wee baby girl. It's so cute. Yes, yes. So um, I haven't been knitting much because my thumbs are arthritic. Um, I actually have psoriatic, I, I mm -hmm. never know how to say it, arthritis. And I'm having a flare up right now. So I have to just baby them and be a little bit ginger about things and not, not go whole hog, which is really, really hard because um, I just love knitting. Do you know, like, our other craft? easier on hands like if we got you a loom oh could you? maybe like, that's the time oh like yes. i don't know like no, I know yes. you still have to i i still i really any sort of um holding is painful especially with any weight but i think just i could use my fingers especially if you had a like i know i have with my rigid heddle like i use the shuttles with the sticks so you're uh -huh. still kind of holding yeah, those but, but i wonder if you had like a shuttle yeah that you could just i'm gonna check that between. right because I, I was getting quite curious about that and then i forgot all about it <laughs> I know. but actually that might be a good thing to do while i let these have a little yeah. bit of time off. that way it still lets you sort of yeah be in touch and wool <laughs> Touch the wool yeah. and um yeah that's a great idea i will look into that um so that's all i did but i remember last time the whole swatching yes, discussion i do remember last time in the swatching discussion when i saw that in our preview i died <laughs> i was like oh, it killed know. me it killed me in the moment that you were just like no <laughs> and then like so emphatically no no and then <laughs> No, so, watching the preview, I was like, "Yep, she really was." was I had surprised myself. It's not that I'm anti-swatching, right. not at all. But um, you just were clearly not in the mood that day. No, and the thing is, is I will often cast on a sleeve, and that is my swatch. Um, and I just make changes to the needle size to get the right gauge as I knit round and round. And I think because what I want to knit is the Keras, which is we'll put a picture, which is a sleeveless tank. I could not fathom swatching for that because there's no sleeve plus it's a lot of color work however i did and here it is it's so pretty isn't it gorgeous look at that color just popping there so what i did is i did as you suggested both methods i knit cast on and knit back and front down here and then i started knitting in the round when i finished this um repeat and then i went in the round for this repeat up here and of course i did the swatchers cheat kind of method where i didn't knit the whole thing in the round i just carried the yarn to the beginning of the the row again 
and it's lovely and I did wash this I just dunked it in let it soak and what I found for the gauge I am half a stitch off in the round and a whole stitch off back and forth okay too tight too tight so I need to go up a needle size from what she recommended and keep knitting to see if I get gauge so I'm glad I didn't cast off because I've got more swatching to do. Okay, so you're just going to switch needles and keep going? Yep, I'll just take these off and uh, put the next size on. Are you going to do like a solid row so that you know where you sure. switched? Sure, sure. I'll do that. Yeah, so um, I might even do what Kelsey does, which is knit two together yarn over four yeah. times when I go up to the four, US four. She recommends US three. <clears throat> and I'm just a little bit tight. And where I want this to be comfortable and not skin tight, I right. that half... Um, that half stitch is going to make a difference all the way around. So I want to get gauge and so I've got more swatching to do. Now, before I swatched, this has been very informative. Oh, good. Before I swatched, I'm like, I'm going to knit it back and forth like the pattern. No. Emphatically, I'm no, not doing that. You decided no. Okay. I decided no. I like knitting in the round. Okay. I don't like purling. I can definitely do it. And it's all good, but the yarn management it. changes. Like when you go to purl, now your um, your right hand yarn, which is your background when you're knitting, is now you got to switch them over because now your left your your left hand is the back um, the background color when you're okay. knitting back, and you have to read the chart left to right, right to left, you know, depending. Which is easy enough, right, um, for color work, but. That always screws me up on lace when I have to read a chart back to front. Um, I mean, left to right. So I'm faster and happier just okay. knitting the color work. So that's good because... Um, you answered my question because that's that's what I was wondering is how how you felt about yeah, how knitting or uh, purling. I'm still curious to try it, but I think I'm going to do like slippers. Yeah, Something yeah, small. yeah. That's a good Not idea. The best. Mm -mm. Um, mm. I if my thumbs weren't hurting as much too, I think I'd be more gung ho to to keep going. I think by the end of this vest, I would be completely comfortable purling back, and I am comfortable. But my gauge was slightly tighter, um, and I think because you're purling and knitting, you do have to manage your gauge a little bit. Um, and just the yarn, I was getting tangled up. Do where you I never knit do color normal. work? in one in each hand yeah. both in okay yeah so usually my right hand is my background color and my left hand is my foreground color <clears throat> so contrast color is my left and main color is my right but when you flip it you're also flipping that order and it was just a lot of work plus it was a short roll I mean maybe if I was knitting the whole thing I would have time to sort of right. settle in but I only did one repeat um so what I'll do now is I am going to knit it in the round and I think I'll do a faux seam down okay. each side which is basically a purl stitch you know when I get okay. to the when I get to the side seams that'll give it the look of of there being a seam there and what I'm doing with the chart, um, Marie's charts are enormous and they're the full thing. But what you can do with your sticky tape is do one repeat and then just repeat that until you get to the end and then finish as she does the end. You don't need to be following this row um, from start to finish. You can find the repeat and do that. And that's what I did. And of course, the repeat was different for this one. As it is for this one so in my book now oh. this is chart a and this is chart b and they have different repeats which is fine um i just have to make sure i'm starting and ending where she has me starting and ending yeah. anyway so i don't know if that makes sense or not but for many of you who've done color work or even cables or lace perhaps I'm so not you're sure. just looking at sort of this chart first and yes then moving on exactly to whereas her charts are the whole thing um, yeah, because I'm breaking like it this up. one might have like an eight stitch repeat, but this one might have 12. Right, or, right. Yeah. But it's okay because, you know, it does fit and she's made the math so that it does fit. Um, I'm just taking it one step at a time. And now I only have, you know, 16 stitches to worry about, not the whole front or back. Um, and by doing the faux seam with the purl, I think I'll add a stitch for that, I think. Um that gives me a clear demarcation of where I'm ending 
and then where I'm starting because it's not going to blend around the side. You can't just knit in the round without interruption right. You're because of all these different <clears throat> chart um, repeats. So I'm putting in a seam and we'll just start like she has you start. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes. Um, I've never knit with British breeds before. I love it. It's gorgeous. I mean, look at the colors, first of all. Marie is a wizard, but it's soft. It's got a halo, kind of. You know, it's fluffy. I love fluff. It's worsted weight, but it has a very... No, it's not worsted weight. <clears throat> or worsted spun, yes. sorry. Um, it's worsted spun, but it's, it's very loosely plied, right? Yeah, I think is the deal. It is very loosely plied, and it's it's it feels wooly. Yeah. It um, is. It is yeah. woolly, um, I think. So I think this is going to be lovely. Mm -hmm. And I can't wait to have it. So Nice. Yes. Well, I took us by surprise with my <laughs> diamond. No, I'm never swatching. Guess what? Um, taking the time to do this, and I did this over a couple of days, um, has been really, really informative and interesting. And this will probably end up being a little cup coaster or something. I don't know. I did break the yarn. Sometimes I think it's pretty to just have the swatches lying down. I know. I know. Exactly. I love I love my swatches when I do them. Usually they're attached as a sleeve, like I said. Because, you know, what I'll do is I'll knit this far on a sleeve and soak it with mm -hmm. the needles on like this and then measure. And if I've not got gauge, I change the needle and I keep going. And to tell you the truth, I actually cast on the front. Okay and started knitting. I thought the front can be my swatch. <laughs> <laughs> and what I did was I did a provisional cast on, started knitting the pattern, and I didn't bother with the um, the rib. I thought I can just pick that up and knit down at the end. And You're it, so bold. <laughs> well, I got into a couple, of, a couple of rows and then I'm like, this thing's gigantic. So I thought, okay, which is interesting. I don't know why my gauge was so loose on that big one and tighter on this one, but it was. So I thought, no, I think I do need to gauge because I'm not going to knit all this. Right. And then it'll not be right. So, yay. <laughs> <laughs> yay for swatching. And I think you mentioned last time you weren't sure what size you were going to knit. Did you measure your C? No, I need to do that. Yeah. I forgot about that. I will do that. Yeah. I will do that before I commit. I think that way too, then you can, you know, you can kind of compare it yep, to it. Exactly. And what I like track. about that one and what I don't like the length as well. So what, what I didn't do this morning before I came in was measure. Um, road gauge. Yes. So I do want to do that. That's the one that baffles me. Like if your road gauge is How off, do you change it? Especially with a pattern like this. Mm -hmm. My solution would be more ribbing. More oh, ribbing um, or maybe more, um, more rows in between the color work. Where Maybe. you just sort of add in. Because if you're up here, you're not going to, you know, if you need more room for your armhole than what gauge allows, right. you're going to need to knit more rows potentially to get it down. Yeah. Yeah. So let's hope your row gauge is close. Well, if it's not, I'll share it all with you. Excellent. Um, but yeah, so I'm quite excited about this. I think it's going to be a slow knit, like I said, because of the old thumbs. But yeah. Um, I think I'll love it and I love the yarn and I love the colors. Yeah. It's so, she's so amazing with her color work. I mean, it takes a lot to coordinate all those colors. It really, um, really does. And I, this is just two repeats, uh, you know, this one and then this one. And they just, I, I was absolutely delighted and thrilled. I'm like, oh my God, I get to do O'Donnell now and I'm doing with Lime Flower. Oh, it's lovely. <laughs> Very happy. Very, very it's happy. beautiful. Thank you. Yes, it's a beautiful swatch. It is. I'm so glad I swatched, really. So if anybody's in doubt. You can just kind of like make a little necklace. There we go. <laughs> Maybe that's what I'll do. Just wear this all day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you looking at? Oh, my swatch? Yeah, it's my new necklace. That's, you know, maybe we'll start that. There you go. Okay. How's that? It's a new thing. It's a new thing. And maybe a little macrame. It's so and Yeah. <laughs> it's my sweater. There you go. <laughs> All right, so enough about that. Did you say you were swatching? I, I swatched a little. So we, we got in some Navia. Last um, week? Last week, I think. Or this Tuesday. week? Tuesday. Well, by the time you see it, it'll be last week. We've got, oh, it's there. I'm like, 
for a second I thought I lost it at home so so we we wanted to say we were chatting in the shop about like wondering how it knits up and I'm just dropping things mm -hmm. so we um mm. I say we me Krista Grady um we pulled a couple of balls out of stock and took little samples home so this is oh. the brushed tradition my goodness and so I did some swatching and I did I haven't washed it um but um wow that is it's it's nice. It's nice, and I, I can. It's very dry feeling. I think once you wash it, it too. It does. It was a really interesting. Like I kept sort of wash, like knitting and being like, huh, huh. Like I enjoyed knitting with it. I like. It does have a. It has a plutolopi or plutolopiish feel, sort of. Like it's not like plutolopi uh, Icelandic wool double coated. You really have that really soft undercoat, and yeah. this doesn't seem to have that no this does um this it doesn't have the same bounce or stretch to it at right. all like it's a pretty what weight like, is it this is a sport weight okay yeah it feels honestly um it it's, feels it feels dry and i think some people would find this itchy if I'm yeah completely it's definitely honest. rustic for yes. sure yes um, however i'd be interested Bring it back next time, having washed it, yeah. and see how it looks and feels yeah. then. And that was on a, I think, size six needle. You already did the one, two, three, yeah. four, five, six, yep. Um, we love this And little... I aimed for six because, I know I didn't do it in the round, but there's a sweater um, that says you can sub this yarn, and I'm I'm eyeballing that sweater. Which, which one is it? It's there? called Winter Woods. Um, it's by the Petite Knitter. Ah, um, uh, right. And it's so pretty. Yes. Um, and I could see as a piece of outerwear where I know I'm going to wear something underneath it. But um, it'll be warm and lightweight. Yeah. Yeah. So. Interesting. I enjoyed knitting with it. Like like I said, it doesn't have a lot of stretch. And I, there was something about, like, I don't know if that's going to focus in on it. But it was very. See there. It was just interesting. There's. Um, I need to get out my fleece and fiber source book and, and do a little this. bit of reading. Yeah. Um, I know that they have a lot of um, sheep that just roam the island in Pharaoh and yep. interesting. Very interesting. Um, yeah, so I, I enjoyed knitting with it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it, it'll make, it feels lighter weight. Well, it is lighter weight than Let Will Pee. Because yeah. that's an iron weight. So mm -hmm. there's that. Is it a single ply or? No, I think it's a two ply. Yeah, it looks like a two ply to me too. So, it, uh, whereas uh, Let Low P is single ply. So it's lighter weight, is two ply. And, but I think you would treat it the same as you would Let Low P in that it's an outer, yeah. you know, you're not, I don't mind wearing Let Low P next to skin. This, this does feel like it's um, shorter. There's more pokey bits. It does feel like it, I mean, you can see it has some real rustic-y bits. Yeah. That do, do stick out. There's, I'm sure it's woolen spun. Do we know? I don't, I'm, I'm not sure about that. Hmm. Maybe? It does seem like there are some shorter fibers yeah. in it for sure. Yeah. Um. So I think, you know, if you are a knitter who wants to knit an outer garment, like a sweater that you'd wear a t-shirt, long sleeve t-shirt under, yeah. um, or even a vest would be good in this. Yeah. Um, you definitely have to be okay with a more rustic wool. You do. For sure. You do. But, you know, if uh, those are our people. Right. So. I mean, I don't know. Like, it's definitely, I don't know how much it would. I'm, honestly, I'm, I don't know. I can feel the prickle in this, but it's not been blocked yet. Right. So I'm really interested to see what it's so like after blocking. I'll bring blocking. it back blocked. So okay. that's the brush tradition. Very um, interesting. And then I also, we also brought home the tradition. So you can see it's still on the needles. And I pulled out a size nine because there's a sweater from um, Navia that said size nine. Is this is the brushed? Or I'm Wait. sorry, this is just tradition. Tradition, okay. Which is an Aaron weight yarn. Let me hold them here. Oops. Oh, so this is an iron weight, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're knitting it on a bigger needle. Yep. And so... It looks less rustic. Doesn't it? It does. I mean, I think it's, it's, I mean, still, it's still similar, rustic. but it's still rustic. But there's um, less... And it's still got like little halo-y bits coming out of it. But it looks less. But it's not brushed, so... Right. What's yeah. interesting, though, is I, reading on the Navia website, reading their info... They say that the brush actually makes it softer. And I'm like, well, hmm. I don't know. I don't know. 
I would love to see both of these washed. Yeah. So next time I'll bring them both washed. I'm enjoying knitting with both of them. They're Good. definitely more rustic. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you want to knit something next to skin, this is probably right. not your go-to yarn. No, if you're a sensitive um knitter, this is this is not. Yeah. But if you want maybe for slippers or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um something rugged. I think too sometimes it's a matter of pairing the right yarn with the right project. Yep. So, yep. Lovely. So, oh, thanks I'll for knitting back those. Next time. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was quite fun. I like it's a nice little test of like what's it going to yeah. like and feel like. Yeah. Actually, I was I liked the um that's right there. Um I liked how the the loops opened up. Yep. Um, especially with a two ply, those those plies kind of push away from each other. Yeah. So I think too, like if you were somebody who really liked rustic, like even like an Ido shawl. Yeah. Because you've got yeah. all the, the lace work in yeah. that, and I thought, oh, that would be that pretty. would be good. Yeah. Um, yeah. But we'll see how it washes up. Yeah. Sounds good. Well, I should mention that I don't have my. Um, Hansel hat done yet. I'm still knitting on that. So I didn't bring it because it doesn't look any different. <laughs> the rows are very long at this point. So, but I'm still plodding away on that. And when I, when I have something to show you, I will definitely bring it in. I will finish it. I think it's yeah. just going to take some time at this point. Yeah. We so. are still seeing in the Ravelry group and in our Facebook group, um, people finishing their haps. Yeah. Um, especially some of the full haps that just took a while or second haps for people. Yeah. Um, I yeah. just saw one this morning, another finished full half. And just gorgeous. Did you see the one on the grass with all the barbecues mm -hmm. and oh, the colors in it were gorgeous. Just what an experience um, pinning out your hat on the lawn like yeah. that. That's we what can I see hope if we can do. find the photo. We'll put it in. It just here. fantastic. Just and beautiful. so many um, good husbands, I think, have been building hap stretchers yeah. for for their knitters, which is. I lovely. still want to build a hap stretcher. Mm -hmm. um, I just haven't gone to it yet. Maybe summer. We project. should make that a project. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, It'll be fun. we'll record our <laughs> wonderful woodworking skills. All right, so it's her birthday coming up in July, which this, will this be going out in July? July mm -hmm, 1st? This comes out July 1st. Yeah, so happy um, 4th of July weekend and all of that, because this will be then. But yeah, the Woolly Thistle is turning six this year in July, which is amazing, amazing. And uh, yeah, so we want to celebrate. Maggie, how are we going to celebrate? We're celebrating with one of our favorite yarns mm -hmm. and we have made special six packs up here oh so first of all it's rama and it's a six pack and what's special about this that we're doing you can bundle them in um, an array of different colors yep some of them by color family Ooh. and some of them just by beautiful coordinating colors yeah and the deal is that you will get a rama summer six pack you get five balls for the cost of or six balls for the cost of five so it won't work the other way the no, same it work the other way. <laughs> <laughs> that's not much of a deal <laughs> <laughs> it's really not much of a deal, but this is, so you get six for five, um, so we hope to see that um, that you guys like that. I think yeah. this is a great way to build your color work stash. Yeah, either color work stash, uh, I think oh. too, some of them would look pretty all knit together. Oh yeah, um, they're just gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah, so great colors for yokes. Let's show them all, shall we? Yeah. Yes, we are planning our annual sweater cow. Right. It'll start at the end of August. So yes. if you think you're going to do a yoke sweater. Something, something like that. Classic. Yeah, you could do a nice gradient or something. Mm -hmm. We got yellows, mustardy yellows. Oh, and I like this one. Hot for summer. All the reds. Mm -hmm. All the hot colors. So these are all the color packs. All the greens. These are all the color packs. And then we've got some, we've got a neutral pack. I like this one too. I love that one. I do. Neutral, sun dyed, um, dyed. So it's not that they're undyed, but they're neutral colors. Blues. Yep. Oh, what are we calling this one? I think we're calling that one New England Shore. Perfect. 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 And then purples. I love that. I love this one. <laughs> uh, New England Forest colors, maybe. Something like that. Pinks. Pinks and reds. I love that. <laughs> um, apparently, Josh's favorite is this one. Yeah. All the we bright figured colors. It's so bright and happy. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, so, Maggie, how are folks going to be able to get these and when? 
Um, so you can head to the shop now and pick up your summer six packs. They will be in the shop all weekend through the fourth. All weekend through the fourth, you get six for the price of five. Stash up uh, for your color work. Uh, Rama Fennel Garn is wonderful yarn for color work. It's a woolen spun yarn, so all those uh, colors just melt together. And yeah, we've yeah. never done this before. We've never done this before, but we, we figured what a better way to celebrate our birthday than one of our best-selling best -selling. yarns. Yes, indeed. So that's that. Now, we did just have a visit from Grady who showed us. Yes. Her swatches, because she swatched with uh, Navia as well. And I was just saying, show us after um, they've been blocked. And yeah. now we have. And Grady was so good, she blocked. She walked, swatched and blocked. So this is the brush tradition. Knit on a six as well? Knit Also knit on a six. And. Oh, yeah. it is softer. Yeah. Isn't that? It? It's less. Let's have a comparison here. Oh, yes. Maybe I won't block mine at all. This is actually pretty oh, that's a good, good idea. to have them together. Yeah. So it, it feels much softer and silkier. It's yep. still very rustic, but yes. it feels less. But it took some of the crunch out. Exactly. Exactly. That's, yeah. Which is sort of what you hope and figure that it's going to do. And it did. Yeah. Lovely. Nice. And actually nice, nice drape. Nice drape. Yep. So a US 6 on that one. And then, what size did she say she eight? did this on? Yeah, I think she did it on an 8. And I was going to go down on mine to an 8, but so, yes, yeah, it did soften up a little bit. It's not soft. It's not as soft as the, um, as this one. Is that the yeah. brush? And that's that's what they say in the on their not Because we weren't website. sure about that, but actually it is softer. Well, and yes, and let's even knit on a tighter. And I think that part of it is, because this is a worsted spray. Fun, and it's a heavier weight it's an Aran weight right um, so there's more of it so there's more of it it feels like a denser yarn yes as opposed to this feels like just a lighter weight fluffy fluffier yarn fascinating that's one of the wonderful things about knitting and fiber and yarn and wool is that you never ever stop learning and it's almost like you know, you can think you know something about something and then you change up one thing and everything changes. So right. it's endless exploration, which we really enjoy. Yeah. Well, thank you, Grady, and, for and sharing And I still this. think, like, I think that it, if you're looking for a hearty outerwear garment. Yes. This would be lovely. For sure. For sure. Maggie, are we still doing the Knitting Buddies program? Because... We we are still doing the Knitting Buddies program. Um, Caitlin has the joy of um, pairing everybody together. And she she just let me know. She just paired a lot of people. Like 90 people or something. 90 people. A lot. Yeah. Um, and she does an excellent job. She tries to pair people up regionally, which I think is really good. And, and you're saying pair, but it's really groups of it's four. It's groups of four to six. Okay. Um, we've actually found that the nice thing about six is if a couple people drop out, it doesn't wipe out your group. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that is still going really, really strong, and we encourage you, if you are looking for some knitting buddies of your own, just uh, reach out uh, on our Ravelry group. Mm -hmm. Is that the only place? Yeah. Nope. We also put a link in our Facebook group, so if you're in either group, um, there's just a simple Google form that you go and you fill out, and then you wait, and we will pair you up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think that's, group. <laughs> and we've been doing that since the start of COVID. Yeah. And it's just it's something that is lasting and people are enjoying. So yeah. we're happy to do that. Um, so yeah, thanks for getting in touch and joining up on, on those. Maggie, we have been selling sock bags like crazy and we still have some more to sell because yeah. we planned this that everybody who wanted one can get one yeah. and uh, we have our sock sprint coming. So this we feel is a really great opportunity to sample some socks and get knitting in the sock sprint so do we have one to show we do we have a couple of pairs so the socks bag for 2022 is a beautiful bag shall we show the bag yes we should. here's the bag and this is joy our lovely knitter and she's got a sheep and chickens and her socks are being hung up on the on the thing on the washing line I love it. And it's a great size bag. It's quite big. Mm -hmm. You can fit all your sock yarns in it. Mm -hmm. And inside you get one of these where you get enough yarn to knit at least four pairs of socks. Depending mm -hmm. on the size of your feet, you will be able to knit four. And it comes with three balls of Vondra from Rama, which is a worsted weight yarn. And we've 
given you three balls so that you can do some color work, you know, either stripes or heels and toes, that sort of thing. Um, Rama, we, Rama says that for an average size pair of socks, then you you'll three. need three. So right. um, if you have smaller feet, you may not need three, but this way you're covered. Yep, exactly. Uh, or your feet are. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then we've got <coughs> Retrous Area uh, uh, Mondim, which is a gorgeous 100% wool uh, fingering white sock yarn. This also is 100% wool. This is from Norway. This is from Portugal. Then from the USA, we've included Jagger Spun's um, sock yarn. What's it called again? Musum Falls, mm -hmm. which is 100% uh, wool again. And it's a super wash. Yeah. Yep. It's a lovely sock yarn. And then down here is obviously very special. Uh, this is the only place you can get it right now. And it is Drover by Daughter of a Shepherd. It's her brand new sock yarn all natural colors there's three different kind of grays to dark brown um, blackish color and you get two 50 gram skeins of one of those colors um this is only available in the sock bag we mm -hmm. actually launched her sock yarn for her which was a great honor and uh, you can get it by purchasing one of these bags at great value okay. um, um yeah, so you get some stickers and we are also including this lovely, I think the size of this is perfect, um, darning needles in a little case. It's big enough that it's not going to get lost in the bottom of your bag forever. You will actually be able to find it by grabbing, <laughs> trying to grab it. Yeah. So that's included. And as we do with most of our bags and boxes and things, we're including um, a suggestion card of different patterns that you can knit. Some of them mm -hmm. are free, some of them are paid for, but you can... You know, as soon as you receive this, you can start knitting, basically, because we're telling you our suggestions of patterns that you can get free on Ravelry, but um, you can obviously knit anything you want. So this is a great way to sort of segue into the sock sprint. Yes, I will say one important thing. When you buy your sock bag, you trust us to pick your colors. Absolutely. So what you get is a bit of a mystery to you. Yes, um, and um, yes, and we've seen lots of people posting their bags on social media, <clears throat> very happy with the colors, outside their comfort zone, zone perhaps, but it's a pair of socks. You know, you can gift them if you don't like that particular color. But um, the Jagger Spun comes in all these lovely uh, spring bright colors, so you will have a pop in there. Yeah, we purposefully, Moose and Falls comes in a full range of both lighter vibrant shades, which are the ones for the bag, and then they also have some beautiful heathered yes. darker shades. Yes. Um, but those are currently not available in the bag. Right. Um, so the bag will be... Um, You'll have a pop of color pop with of that. Color. The colors for the Mondim, they're all speckled, colorful colorways. Yep. yep. Um, and from for Vondra, we're pulling from the whole color wheel of Vondra. Yep, Vandra. yep. And that, those are solids, and the um, Daughter of a Shepherd is a solid yep. as well. So a really nice variety. We're covering England, USA, Portugal, and Norway. All of them are 100% yarn... Uh, percent wool except for Drover. Daughter of a Shepherd has 10% nylon just to help with strength but all of them have a nice tight ply and are you know sock yarns for knitting socks so we hope you enjoy that if you have already purchased your bag thank you very very much we really appreciate um the response that people are having with it is really fun to see all your posts out there and so many people are really knitting along with us yeah. have you noticed that they've been knitting the color work then the hap they're getting ready for the sock sprint, which is really nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Um, the, the grocery girls, too, gave yes. away one of our yes. sock bags and um, chatted a bunch. So hello if you find us through the grocery girls. It was so nice of them to, to um, show off these lovely yeah. bags. They're just delightful. They're fun. I really enjoyed watching their, their show. They're hilarious. And, um, yeah. Seeing their response to the yarns we sent them. Yeah. It's just super fun yeah definitely so thank you uh, tracy and jody for that mm -hmm. and yeah we still have them available so do come and shop if you've been thinking about it um now's the time yeah now's the time uh get it now and you'll be all set for the sock spring which is when starts july 15th right. and goes for two weeks the goal is it's a bit of a challenge see if you can knit a pair of socks in two weeks adult size but that's the yeah. only um that's the only rule we have you can knit any yarn any pattern whatever you like. So try and bang out a pair in two weeks. Of course, there's always people who bang out 
a couple of pairs. Yeah. They're there's just... always somebody who's done in like two days. And then there's <laughs> always somebody who's like, I'll never get them done. And, That's all are welcome. And, yeah. Yes. Um, it's just knitting together. We're not, there's no sign up. No. And it's more of a personal challenge. Yes. Um, to see if you can get it done. And yeah. For some people, the answer is like, yeah, that's no problem. And for some of us. <laughs> more challenging. It is a bit more challenging. Yeah. So. But we do the sock spread in July because it's hot outside. Knitting on a sock is a lot easier than a, some big shawl yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. We've been, I think this is our fourth, fourth annual sock spread. Which is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Because I remember, it was your idea to start this. Yeah, it was just one of those, like, let's just have a quick and dirty cow. Like, yeah. let's just see And how we'll call fast... it the sock sprint, you yeah, said. Yeah, let's just see how fast we can knit some socks. And mm -hmm. you guys like doing it. So we'll see many of you back because you've been knitting with us. Yeah. And that's wonderful. If you're new, just come on. How do they join the sock sprint? So you just pop into one of our groups. So you can either join our Facebook group and or our Ravelry group. There are chat. There's chat happening in both places already for the sock sprint. So just come on into the group, um, introduce yourself, let us know what you're knitting, what yes. yarn you're using. And uh, so in Ravelry, there'll be a thread for it that mm -hmm. you can go into. On, sh on um, Facebook, we need to use a hashtag. It's, it's easier. In the Facebook group, it'll still be posted in the group, but um, the hashtag helps us find you on Facebook or if you're sharing on social media, on Instagram. And what's that hashtag? And that is 2022TWT Sock Sprint. Okay. <clears throat> so come join us in either or both places. That's fine. Knit along with us. See if you can beat your personal best for how long it takes you to knit a pair of socks. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm yeah. thinking about what to knit right now. Yeah. yeah, and with I'm, I'm still not sure what yeah. I'm knitting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I need more socks. You know, I I knit socks for for quite a long time before I started knitting garments. Mm -hmm. So I have a lot of socks, but they're starting to they're starting to be a little bit old, and I need some new stuff to put yeah. in my drawer. Yeah, yeah, you are not alone. Yeah, so yeah, join us. Um, <clears throat> oh, why Georgia spinners? Yeah. West Yorkshire Spinners. So West Yorkshire Spinners is a British uh, yarn. They're a mill in Yorkshire, and they uh, they have been part of the Woolly Thistle since we started. They were one of our first vendors, and we always uh, stock their signature four ply, which is a sock yarn. It's 25% nylon, 75% wool, of which 35% is <clears throat> Blue face Lester. And they've just come out with a bunch of new colors, which are gorgeous and perfect for summer. Look at these. I think this is called the Zandra Rhodes collection, or is all of them from? I think the six okay. multicolored are the Zandra Rhodes collection, and I think these are just breaks that they added. And if you don't know, Zandra Rhodes is a very famous British designer. She's been around for years. Um, very famous in Britain. I don't know if Americans know who she is. I was not familiar with yeah. her, but I'm very impressed with her sock colorways. <laughs> <laughs> She's a great sock designer, so <clears throat> or at least yarn designer. So yeah. shall we uh, show some of these off? These are sure. all new. Yeah, these are all new, and they're in the shop now. So um, I love that they'll do these funky... Um, look at that. This is my favorite one. <laughs> Is lovely, but then they'll do a matching um, color that you can add to mm -hmm. um, heels and toes and whatnot. So that's really nice. This one here is Botanical Bloom 1024. Are these in the shop now? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I'll just show you. This is Rouge 1000. 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, okay. And this one is Forest Stripes. Lovely. I really like that one. 1026 is that color. What would you pair that with, Maggie? I actually might almost pair it with this one. Yeah, or have it. I mean, I think you'd have... You, you could have fun with that. I'm sure, too. There are some... Uh, we have a ton of West Yorkshire. Yes, you know, we have colors. a lot of... Yes. So there, I know that we have a green. Or the blue. Juniper that. would probably go with that. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yes, lots of... Maybe we'll take some photos. Yeah, of... and we're actually, we're working on a blog post um, okay. where we show you different possible color combinations. Perfect. And we'll link that in the West Yorkshire Spinners collection. Sounds for, good. Easy for you to find. Um, and then there is Sandra's Rainbow. Very bright and colorful. Mm -hmm. Lots of blues and reds and greens and pinks and yellow or gold. 1027. Go ahead, Maggie, do the next one. This one is Bluebell Mist. Bluebell mist. Oh, I love bluebells. <laughs> All right. And 
Sunset Bouquet, 1023. Very interesting. Sandra Rhodes is very bright. I think she was um, around during the punk era of the 70s. Oh, was she? Mm -hmm. In the photo from West Yorkshire Spinner, she has bright pink hair. Yeah, that's about right. It's delightful. Yep. Um, Woodland Awake. This one's pretty. That is pretty. It's softer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And does that go like that? Or does that? Oh, I, I like both up. of those yeah. actually here. Um, so we've got Pacific, which is 1007. And that would go with that. Mm -hmm. And then also. Sunflower, 1001. Yep, and it goes with that too. So that brightens it up. And this one, kind of yeah. mellow. Depending on what you're going for. Lovely. And then just to show you the rest of the new solids, we, we got all three of these. Do you know how many socks you give me? How many do you think you can I, make? I always have, I have smaller feet. I always have gobs left over. Like, I think I could get three Oh, yeah. Socks. Three pair, three socks or four do you think you could even get four? Depending on how long I did the leg, probably. Yeah, yeah I'm sure I could too, because I've got strangely small feet. Mm -hmm. Amethyst is this lovely purple. They're not strange, they're Korean suns. <laughs> they're sort of truncated. <laughs> Amber is this lovely <clears throat> orangey. What color is this? Amber, I guess. It's lovely. Mm -hmm. It's cobalt. That's my kind of blue right there. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And this is spruce, which is a nice bluey green, I would say. Bright green, though. And that's it. And that's it. So light. Oh, and it feels so soft, doesn't it? It is. It, it makes great socks that last a lifetime, pretty much. Yeah. They're not all going to fit again. I don't know. So these are 100 grams. <clears throat> so a lot of wool in there. Yeah. And um, yeah, wonderful sock yarn. These are so good. Yep. And they're in the shop now. Yeah. All right. Let's see what else. Shall we go and see Caitlin now? Yes. All right. Be great. We'll go and see Caitlin. She's showing us um, some spinning of her fiber that she's been showing us. And, and her hat progress. And her hat progress. And when you come back, we will talk about the Bonnie Isle hat and what, what else is coming in July. We have mm -hmm. some more lovely things to show you. So be sure to come back and we'll see you on the other side. Hello everyone, I'm Caitlin. Nice to be back with you again. Today I have an update on my fleece processing journey and wanted to show you a little bit more of my Hansel hat that I'm still working on. Uh, first of all, I'll tell you what this sweater is. This is called the Dennis T. It's D-E-N-I-S. It's by Elizabeth Smith and it is written for a linen Aran weight yarn. I believe mine I knit in a linen and cotton blend. The yarn I ended up finding was more of a fingering weight but held double. Uh, it worked well as a replacement. Um, it's kind of um, just a little thing I need to remind myself of every once in a while is maybe you find a yarn that you love but it's not the right weight. Um, think about doubling it. Maybe that will get you the weight that you want and um, also, uh, the, those projects tend to go a lot faster since they're that heavier weight. So this is uh, knit in two pieces. It was knit from the bottom up. You knit the whole front. You cast on a couple of stitches once you get to this point to kind of create the sleeve. And then you kind of finish it off at the neckline. Then you knit the back, which has just a little of the detail at the top. And then you seam it just along here. Um, this edge is just meant to kind of roll in. Um, pretty simple, fun design. Uh, something to kind of get away with wearing in the summer, which it is here officially in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, next, I'll show you a little bit of my Hansel hat. I've, I'm still working along, even though the hat knit along has officially ended. I am on the edging of the half Hansel. This is by Gudrun Johnston. Um, if you've been watching the last few episodes, you've seen Corrine is knitting the full version. Maggie has finished this half size version and I'm still working away. So um, you might know by now the construction is kind of a half triangle. First you knit the triangle section here in the middle. Then you pick up the stitches around the edge, the two side edges to do the waves. And then 
you do a provisional cast on of just these eight stitches here. And then you have kind of a separate needle and you're working this edging and you're going back and forth sort of the other direction to do these little lace triangles. I've never done an applied edging before is what it's called and I think it's pretty interesting. So you can see I've got kind of most of my stitches on my main needle and I'm knitting away on just a short little DPN. And you knit one row and then you incorporate one stitch of the stitches that are waiting on your main needle. And then you go back and you knit them the other direction. And then you go back and you incorporate yet another stitch. And as you do that, it makes this really beautiful um, sort of applied edging there. So that's been fun to learn. I do have to look at my stitch notes every couple of stitches. Uh, it's not something I've been able to memorize yet. I'm almost halfway to the halfway point, but yeah, still need to consult um, the pattern every once in a while. Um, yeah, this has been a lot of fun. Not exactly a mindless do this while you're um, chatting or something like that. But um, yeah, I'm still learning a lot with that. So can't wait for this to be done. I'm excited to block it because I think that's going to make these uh, edges just look really lovely. Um, so this I'm knitting in Jameson and Smith yarns. The main color is the Shetland Supreme in 2006, which is their undyed kind of line that's very similar to the two ply jumper weight and these are all the two ply jumper weight um, colors. Next I want to show you a little bit of my spinning I've been doing. I have popped on here a few times to tell you about the bit of American Tunis fleece that I got from my local Living History Museum and first I washed it and then I carded it and now I am starting to spin it. So I've been working from this bat, which you saw me card two episodes ago, and uh, now I'm trying to turn it into yarn. So this is the, the carded, this is woolen style preparation because the fibers are jumbled up all different directions. And now I'm taking that and I've been spinning it on my drop spindle. So this is my wooden drop spindle, I'd say as far as weight goes, it's it's on the heavier side. Uh, this is a top whorl style, which means that the disc part is at the top. And um, then the hook up here uh, is kind of what holds your yarn as you're spinning. And then as you spin, you end up eventually winding it onto here. We're going to put a little video in here of me actually spinning. It was a bit tricky logistically to try to show you that from up close on a camera. Um, so I'll talk you through that step in a moment. Um, but I wanted to show you first how I started preparing the bat to spin from it. So I just kind of, with these types of bats, the fibers are sort of running in this direction rather than this direction. Um, so it'll be easier to split the the bat from this way. I just kind of take a little chunk from one edge and start stripping it away from the rest. And I do that for the whole length except for the very end I leave attached and then I just turn and I go the other direction. And I kind of zigzag my way back and forth. This wool is sticky and grippy enough that it does want to kind of stick to itself so it's, um, even though I've kind of turned the corner, it still wants to stick. So I'll separate that out. Now I've got kind of a strip here that I'm ready to work from. And what I like to do first is called pre-drafting. That's when you just kind of take some of the fibers and yank them apart a bit more. You want them to still be grabbing each other. You don't want it to be too delicate, but you don't want to have to do all of the drafting work while you're actually doing the spinning. If you can prep it a little bit first, that'll make the actual spinning easier. There we are. So now this is fairly ready to put onto the spindle. When you're ready to join a new piece, just kind of fluff the end out and fluff the end of your spindle 
fiber and just kind of overlap them and tug a little and it pretty well joins itself. So um, my spindle started with a loop of regular yarn, kind of a big long loop that I looped around the top here and then had out here in a closed loop. Uh, and then that leader yarn, it's called, is what I first hooked onto here. And then I looped my fiber loosely onto the top of that and started spinning. Now that I have this pretty well started, I can just uh, hook it on and start spinning from there. Now we'll put the video of me spinning in here so that you can see kind of what that looks like. All right, so here I'm just getting ready to start spinning another section. I first uh, use my leg to spin the spindle and build up some twist. Then I park it between my legs and my knees there and then I do a little bit of the drafting and let the twist go up into the fiber. This is called park and draft, and this is the first technique that I learned from a YouTube video I can't remember the name of anymore. But it's a nice way to first learn how to drop spindle uh, when you don't have to focus on both keeping the spindle moving and drafting at the same time. So you can um, focus on one or the other. But here you can see now what it looks like when you keep the spindle spinning and spin at the same time. There, I just kind of threw out a little extra tuft I didn't want in there. But you just kind of work your way up the fiber. Once your arm's getting a little tired from holding it up so high and your spindle's almost to the ground, then you'll want to kind of pause, unhook it, and then wind your length of yarn onto the spindle. It's designed to hold that on there itself. Um, so then you can kind of loop it back on, get another section, and keep going. So I'm just trying to tease out about as much fiber as I want the thickness of my yarn to be while paying attention to keeping my um, spindle spinning as well. So uh, one other thing I wanted to show you is how you can look to see what your yarn is going to be turning out like um, kind of in the midst of your spinning. So I'm just going to build up a little twist in this here. Let it twist a little. I think I need a little more length. So I'm gonna do a little bit of teasing out of the fibers here. And then build up just a little more. And what I like to do at the beginning of my spinning is make what's called a plyback sample. And that's when you just, I'm doubling the yarn back up on itself and letting it kind of take its own twist and this way you can see about what your finished yarn is going to end up looking like if you put that amount of twist in that I just had. This is a little bit fluffy and loose for me, so I would try to add a bit more twist in next time. Um, and that can be done in two steps. First, what I'm doing now is spinning singles. Uh, I'm just spinning one ply of yarn I'll make um, kind of a whole spindle full. I might be able to fit all this fiber onto the one spindle before I need to empty the spindle. Then um, what I'll do is uh, wind this off of the spindle into a center pull ball, what I'll do for this amount of, of yarn. And then I'll take one strand from the outside of the ball and one from the inside, and then I'll ply them together. The yarn could be finished as a singles like it is. It might still have some of that twist energy in it in your finished yarn. Might want to kind of um, still spin up itself a little and maybe bias a little bit in your knitting. But you can have a singles yarn just from this. But it will be stronger and more balanced if you can ply it and have a two-ply yarn. So by kind of plying it back on itself there, you can see what a finished two-ply would end up looking like. Um, to make a two-ply, I would then use the center pole ball, take one ply from the outside, one from the inside, and then spin them on the spindle again um, together. And you have to do that in the opposite direction as you spun your singles. So that'll be the trick is when I go to ply these, um, I'm used to kind of running it down my leg one direction and I'm going to have to remember to kind of spin it the other direction to get it going 
I spun my singles clockwise and my, my plying is going to have to be doing um, counterclockwise. So um, yeah, I, I don't have the finished yarn to show you yet, obviously, but hopefully next time I will. And hopefully you found that a bit enjoyable to see kind of the basics of spindle spinning. I've even seen people create their own spindle using a pencil and a CD or a DVD and just putting a, a hook into the eraser. <laughs> if you're really looking for like the easiest way to give spinning a try, just get a little fluff of fiber and um, make your own little spindle. Um, but yeah, I'm sure quite a few of you are also experienced spindle or wheel spinners. Um, to be honest, I spun my first sweater quantity on a spindle and then I just knew that I loved it so much, I went ahead and got a wheel and I tend to do most of my spinning on that. But would love to hear more about what you prefer and or if you're thinking about maybe getting into spinning. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you for coming back and thank you, Caitlin, for that lovely video you posted. Um, I think it's really interesting to see the spinning on a drop spindle. Did she say that she spun a sweater's worth on a drop spindle? I think she did. Oh. Which is wild. Yeah. I know some spinners who absolutely just love their drop spindles. Yeah. Um, yeah. Since I got my wheel, my drop spindle has been supremely, supremely neglected. Oh. Like, I just don't. I'll bust it out occasionally, and the novelty wears off within 30 minutes, and I'm like, oh. It's fairly well known that I'm not much of a spinner. It just hasn't grabbed me the same way as yarn uh, knitting has. Yeah. yeah. Interesting, though. But, yes, I have tried uh, drop spindling, and, in fact, when I took my kids to Fair Isle, back in 2017 now, um, I made, and she was talking about that you can make your own drop spindle. I made one on the Isle of Fair Isle with a pencil and I bought some plaster scene at the post office, which is the only shop on the island. They had plaster scene. Do you know what that is? I don't really know what plaster That's scene like, what do you call that? Um, it's like putty and you can use it to stick things on the wall. Okay. It's like dry, but it's sticky. And okay. kids use it in school to play with, like Play-Doh. Like silly putty? I don't know. I don't know. It's like Play-Doh, but it's even more strong than mm -hmm. that. Anyway, we always called it plaster scene. And um, so I got a wad of that, okay. made a big ball at the bottom as a weight. Okay. I didn't have anything to make the whorl. So, um, and I don't remember how I did the hook. Now I think about it. I need to go dig that out. I have it somewhere. Anyway, I went and got you all the- You could do without a hook. You could do the, where you kind of wrap it around the top. I think that's what I did then. Because I didn't have, I don't remember having a hook. And um, basically, I went around, you know, gathering all the hinty leggings, which is the little tufts that you see caught on thistles, which is why I wear the woolly thistle, or on fence posts. And um, I didn't even bother washing them. I was just playing. Because we didn't have internet. <laughs> we hardly had electricity most of the time. So the kids were out climbing fences and looking over our cliffs and things. And I was spent, well, I was with them when they did right. that. But, you know, I was spinning. And um, the plaster scene sort of helped keep things going around. It was really fun. I'm going to find them yeah. and bring it in. Anyway, long story short. Is it sitting somewhere with the wool still on mm -hmm. it? Okay. Yep. I want to see this. Yeah, yeah. I did a little bit. It was good. Yeah. Um. All right. So let's announce a winner. Thanks for coming back and listening to all this havering. Um, Maggie, you tell us who our winner is. So our second winner today of a $25 Wooly Thistle gift card is Lindsay Force. She says, amazing shop cast. Love seeing the new sock bags and book boxes. Thank you for always curating such thoughtful items. I lo also love the gauge swatch segment. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to see your swatch cream. Well, hopefully you're impressed, as I am. Yeah. Um, so Lindsay, email us at yes. info at the Wooly Thistle. We'll put prize winner in all caps in the subject line, and we will get you your prize. Congratulations. And again, if you want to be in the running for a prize, leave us a comment down below. Uh, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel, which is growing, by the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, and our Instagram just clicked over to 30,000. Yes. Thank you. Thank we're you actually, so much. I think we're actually close to 31. Are we? Oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> Yeah, amazing. Thank yes, you. thank you. Thank you very much. So, Lindsay, well done. Congratulations and thanks for being here. So, in between podcasts, they announced at Shetland Wool Week uh, that their new patron is uh, 
Linda Shearer. Linda Shearer. Uh, she's new to me, so I, I have to go check her out and yeah. see what she's up to. But congratulations, Linda Shearer. That's great. And she has designed a hat, as they do. Put a picture of it here. And that that released uh, just a little while ago. And so we've made kits with our Jameson and Smith. Yeah, so the hat is called the Bonnie Isle hat. And um, we have the Jameson. You, have a, you get a little tote bag, a little thistle tote. And you get all the yarn you need to make your own Bonnie Isle yes. in the Jameson and Smith color. And it's right. very pretty and quite bright. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a nice hat. So, yep. yep that's and we've thrown in a little tiny stitch marker. A little bee. Just a little bee. Yeah. Yeah, so we have those. Um, feel free to stop in and get one of those. Yeah. And lastly, Maggie, we want to show off a new to us yarn. Yes. A new to us yarn that is also local to us. Yeah, so this is a preview. The yarn's not available yet, but um, will be in July. In July. Okay, so this is coming in July. And um, it's actually a Junction Fiber Mill right here. Farm Fresh. Junction Fiber Mill is a little mill located in White River Junction here in the Upper Valley. Uh, they're in Vermont. We're right across the water in New Hampshire. And they started business uh, just last year. Two friends got together and um, acquired wonderful mill equipment and set up shop. And so this is their Farm Fresh and it is North Country Cheviot, 100% New England wool. And does it say what weight it is? I think it's DK. It's DK. So this is DK. This is uh, their white Cheviot. And this lovely gray. And they're calling this black, but of course it is brown. And I love this. It's so beautiful. This actually you might have seen before because this is what I bought when we went to New Hampshire Sheep and Wool. New Hampshire Sheep and Wool. They were vending there and we got chatting with them, which was really fun. So we have their three natural yarns here, but that's not all. What else do we have? <laughs> we're kind of fun, excited about this. Look at this basket of joy and happiness. <gasps> so this is their own line called Making tracks. Making tracks. I almost called them mist tracks, which is actually an ice cream that I love. <laughs> <laughs> this is making tracks, and let's show everybody the different colors. So this is this here is an American, all American yarn that is variegated, and they dye it in small batches and then mill it together, spin it together to end up with this lovely barber pulling, sort of hand spun effect. This one here that I'm showing you is called Pebbles, and I love it. Oh, uh, okay. There's not one that I don't love. I know, I love all of them. This one is called Lookout Ledge. <laughs> it's so good. It is. It's got black in it. Yeah, so they do all the dyeing. I know you want to show that one because that's your favorite. <laughs> this is late October, which is nice. This is sort of the color of the leaves turning. Yep. This one's called hydrangea. Mm. It kills me because it looks like a hydrangea. It one. really does. They're, it's it's beautifully Perfect. done. Mm -hmm. Paisley. I had to have this one because it's called Paisley, which is where my sister was born in Scotland. Hey, Paisley buddy. Anyway, this is um, lovely greens, reds, pinks, mm -hmm. a little bit of peachy color. Lovely. Yep. And this one is cranberry and apples. My jam. That's very similar to the one I bought, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's beautiful. And this one here is called Summer Shade, and it's gorgeous. All the greens, so fresh. Yeah. Zinnia. <gasps> I know. <laughs> gorgeous. <laughs> I know, really. You can't help it. They're so now, pretty. Maggie, what would you knit with these? You know, I think it'd be really fun to knit. Um, so they go really well with the yes. Farm Fresh. So you could pick up the Farm Fresh as a solid and pair it with any of the variegated. Um, you could do any of the um, Andrea Mowry, her mosaic patterns. Yes. Um, her, what's, what's the one, the shawl? Shifty. The Shifty. Yeah, she's got that whole shift series. So you could do the Shifty. She also has a hat um that flicker and flame i think is the name of the hat yeah and i bet like if you used one of these for the color work yeah um and then a solid yeah for the outside it would be really pretty yes or you were thinking about using you know uh one of these in a yoke and yeah. doing like a jennifer steingast sweater yeah. all solid but then having this or one of these in the yoke let me just tell you what color this is honeycomb 
is so pretty. I love those yellows. Yep. And then I think the, the last one here is Birdsong. Yeah, so you could Gorgeous. take another DK weight yarn, either the Farm Fresh or just another DK weight. And What about strip um, yarn? I would try it. Like, mm -hmm. strip yarn's a nice DK, solid weight. Yep. Um, and I do. I think that this would be really pretty in any of the yokes. Yes. I agree. Um, I agree. Just gorgeous. So we are thrilled to be working with uh, Peggy and Amanda mm -hmm. from Junction Fiber Mill. They really uh, came through for us and got this all together. And we hope that you will check it out and enjoy it. Um, so yes, coming in July. So not long now. Look at yeah. this one. I think I have to snag one of these before they fly out the door. <laughs> it's so pretty. I love that. I, know. I love it all. I know. There. They're gorgeous. And, you know, this North Country Chivia is really special, too. It um, really is. New England yarn, spun in Vermont. Small farm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she basically has found a few small farmers around who are willing to give uh, or sell her their fleeces, and then she spins it up. They did a really nice operation. Uh, you, Josh, and I went to visit her one day, and we spent an afternoon at the mill, yeah. which was really informative. And interesting yeah. And yeah so that's everything maggie that i think we have for everyone this time yeah um we do have shetland wool adventure journal on pre-order right now um i don't think we have any other pre-orders happening at the moment ppq no i know that's Hong out. just available yeah. yeah uh yarn the scottish journal of yarn has been doing phenomenally we are so excited about that just to give you a quick look um if you're interested in Scottish history uh, as it uh, translates to fiber and yarn and uh, textiles. This is a really good yeah, read. All kinds of beautiful articles in there. Yeah, we've been seeing uh, social media posts as it lands in your mailbox, um, and you guys seem to love it as much as we do. Yeah, this is issue five of Fair, and I believe six will be coming out soon. And you guys are really enjoying uh, these magazines as well. And no wonder, the production value of it is absolutely gorgeous and some crazy, um, wonderful crafting happening. These are professional artisans and it's not just um, knitting. In fact, um, it's mostly not anything to do with knitting. It's to do with art and uh, good living really, but oh my gosh, plenty of textile stuff in there too. So just to let you know that uh, the next issue will be coming soon. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think that's everything that we have this time, Maggie. So keep on knitting. I will say, if you want to know when issue six is coming out, you should join our newsletter. Oh, for sure. <laughs> well, they'll, they'll all be on our newsletter because they're, yeah. they're, they know what they're doing. But if you're not, be sure to get on it. How do they get on our newsletter? They can either visit the website, thewoollythistle.com, or you can visit the show notes and we've got a link directly so you can sign up. Just sign up and um, you'll get all the inside scoop and you'll know when things are coming. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Maggie, I think that's everything for today. Um, it's been really fun catching up with you all and seeing what we're doing with yeah. the knitting. And hopefully I will have more uh, information on uh, my swatching and hopefully I get gauged. That would be good. <laughs> so until then, uh, stay well, stay cool, keep knitting. And if you go out, take your knitting. Bye. Bye.